chintz. All right. Thank you all for hopping back in. Thank you for sharing this broadcast. So we're back and we're at part two. I'll go through one through eight really quickly. Number one was your business success is going to be based on your personal goals and values. Number two, persistently improve and invent within your business. Number three, start with what you have. You don't need money to start helping people. Number four, learn to use free tools. Number five, care about your customers. Number six, monetize your strengths and staff your weaknesses. Number seven, be the jack of several trades. Number eight, stay current with your feel. And number nine, your business may come out of a difficult experience. Your business may come out of a difficult experience, so stay open. When I first started my business in 2010, um, I started with the publishing side of my business, which was God Ideas Publishing, and that is where I published my own books. This is just one of them. It's a church love novel series, and it's romance fiction. It's Christian romance fiction. I cover courtship. I cover um, marriage. I cover knowing uh, if that person is the one for you or not, but I do it all in a fiction setting. So you're getting the principles while you are being entertained by a storyline, okay? And out of God Ideas, I was able to use my editing skills and I work with other companies and other authors to help them to publish a book that is worth reading. <laughs> so beyond the cover, it's important that your work is worth reading on the inside. So I work with other companies, other authors to do their editing. I also help other people to publish. This was a client of mine that went through the entire publishing process and I consulted her so that I walked her through the process of self-publishing so that she could be independent and publish for herself in the future. So that was publishing consulting. All right. And so 2010 started my business. I started out with the publishing side and then I began to get into private tutoring. 2011, my life went into haywire. <laughs> Let's just say I had, uh, I, I could have been called Josephina, right? I went through it. Family betrayal, thrown into a pit, abandoned, lost a lot of stuff. All of that happened. But one thing that I did not stop was I did not stop doing business. And even though I went through all of those different changes and transitions, because I had started a business, I was able to use my skills to be able to bring in income and support my family and myself. So part of those years I spent building the authoring side of my business as well as tutoring privately. I have been doing it in the past, but my increase of tutoring began to speed up. And now I'm at the point where um, I have to turn students down. I've had offers to move to other countries <laughs> to almost be like a governess um, for students. But at this point in my life, because I'm moving into different areas of media, I am no longer in the space to be somebody's nanny <laughs> for a year and teaching all their children. I would have loved to have done that a couple years ago, but I'm simply in a different space in my company. So I can't do that. All right. But I do take on private clients for tutoring, especially children. I do um, SAT prep, ACT prep, test prep. 
Um, my specialty is working with children with special needs, and so I know that there is always um, a need for that, um, teachers who know how to teach children with special needs. And so that was another piece of my company. In last year, I finally got to the music publishing side of my company. So this is my first music CD release, and it is called Heartbeats and Hot Coals, and I released this last year under my own company, God Ideas Music. So yes, I get to get the publishing royalties, I get the writing royalties, I get the performance royalties. That's a whole other course that I do. If you're ever interested in learning how to collect all of your royalties so that you're not getting gypped. <laughs> and then also my visual art side of my business, I do painting. And this painting is actually uh, turned into a graphic that will go with my design side or my um, book printing side, as well as my t-shirt company. And so all of my lovely sayings that I like to say, I now have them by t-shirt. This is one of them, repentance, revolution, because that's what America needs right now. We need repentance, and we need a repentance revolution. So that is one of the designs on my T-shirt site. Here's another one. This actually comes from my music. I have a song called Prodigal, and one of the things that I talk about in that song is Prodigal Come Home. This is a design that I created that's on my T-shirt site. So what am I saying to you? I am saying, do not let someone limit what you can and cannot do. <laughs> All right? Do, don't let people limit what you can do. If you have a t-shirt company, go for it. If you design the designs on your shirts, go for it. If you know other artists who are willing to partner with you and create designs for your t-shirt line, go for it. If you have music and you want to get your music out there, study up and read what it takes to get your music published. Don't be cheap. Don't try to do it in your cousin's living room. Find a professional studio and get your work done. Get your work professionally done and packaged so that when you present it to someone, they don't throw it in the trash thinking that it's not worth anything because you have not invested the time that it takes to properly package what you are selling. All right? So that is the end of our business segment. And I want to go to maintaining healthy relationships. And I'm going to try to close it down in the next eight minutes. And um, I hope Apostle will give me uh, some minutes after that to answer any questions. Because I know that was a lot for business. Um, but let me move on really quickly to maintaining healthy relationships. These are very simple, but they're important. Number one, self-care. You are no good. You are no good to the people around you if you do not put on your oxygen mask first. If you go on a plane, the first thing they tell you they start giving you all the instructions about where things are should an accident happen. And one of the things that they tell you is, if you're going to be on that plane, make sure you put your oxygen mask on first before you try to administer help to anyone else around you. A part of maintaining healthy relationships is maintaining healthy relationships with yourself. That means self-care. Self-care. All right, number two, how do I maintain healthy relationships? Speak up. Talk about what's bothering you and what is pleasing you. So don't let it all just be criticism, but make sure that there is some positivity, there's some compliments, and don't hold stuff in. I personally have a five-minute rule. If something is on my mind about someone that I'm in relationship with, and it stays with me more than five minutes, then I probably need to speak up about it. If it's staying on my mind, 
if I'm thinking about it over and over and over again, I need to speak up. Okay? So you have to be willing to verbally verbalize and communicate what it is that you need from that person. All right? Number three, mutual respect. Mutual respect and honor. Value the feelings, the wishes, and the choices of other people. It is really bad. I'll say this. It is really bad when you pour out respect or when you show up or when you are supportive and it's never returned. That's an unhealthy relationship. So there should be mutual respect, especially in business. If I'm sharing all of your stuff on different platforms and I'm rooting you on and I'm cheering for you, even if both of us have a t-shirt company and I'm willing to share your products with my clientele and I look and I see that you never share anything of mine, that's a problem. That's not a, a mutual relationship. That's not mutual respect. All right? So that's just an example. Number four, compromise. Be willing to fight fair. Be willing to resolve conflicts fairly. Be willing to not have your way all the time. Because I guarantee you, you're not right all the time. All right? Number five, be supportive. Offer encouragement. Build the people up in your life. Point them to positive life-building activities and resources. Don't be the person that is known as the person who consistently tears people down. That, that it will get to the point where nobody will want to share anything with you because you always have something negative to say. So be supportive. Number six, respect people's privacy. Healthy relationships require space. You cannot be a person's conscience or their personal God that sits on their shoulder all the time. So respect people's privacy. Respect their right to have a choice. <laughs> all right? And number seven, guard their transparency. Guard their transparency. Practice confidentiality have integrity even if you disagree with a person because this happens often in business and in personal relationships even if you disagree with a person or you fall out of friendship with them or you fall out of business partnership with them that is not a license to tell to spread or to sell their information that was delivered to you in confidence Bad habit. <laughs> oh, 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 we're not friends anymore, so I can just tell it all. I can tell all of their business. I guarantee you it's going to come back to bite you. I guarantee you that you're going to reap what you sow. And I can tell you right now that a lot of people need to be careful in this particular area when they are starting or forming a new partnership you need to pay attention to what your partner does when they get angry and what your partner does to other people because I guarantee you the moment you get out of favor with that person they'll do the same thing to you okay that was a platinum nugget all right <laughs> so guard the transparency that people entrust you with. If they're being transparent with you in confidence, guard that transparency. That's how you maintain healthy relationships. I have relationships in my life that are 20 years long, 15 years long, 10 years long, because they know that if they have a falling out with me, I'm not going to go on social media and blast them and put all their business out into the streets. So have some integrity. Lastly, and I'm closing, I want to hit going back to number one again. <clears throat> Self-care. You are in no position 
to be in a healthy relationship with other people if you are not taking the time to care for yourself. Take time to be with your friends. Get enough sleep. Exercise. Do something. Lift weights. Walk. Jog. Plank. Do something. <laughs> Drink lots of water. I've learned that in my later years. Drink lots of water. It does help with your energy. Have at least 30 minutes a day where you have time to reflect to yourself. At least 30 minutes. And speak to yourself out loud. Get yourself a mirror. Look into it and speak to yourself. No, you're not crazy, but you should do it. You should speak to yourself. Because there are some days that may go by, especially if you're a single person, you may not hear an encouraging word from anyone that day. But you can always speak to yourself and encourage yourself. Lastly, end, put an end, put an end. Somebody type E-N-D. Put an end to relationships that drain your energy or limit the time you spend with draining people. So I know some people say this person is exhausting. They call me all the time. They call me with crazy stuff. I've already given them advice. They don't take the advice and they're still calling me about the results or the consequences of the crazy decisions they keep making. That is a draining person. Either in the relationship if you can or like some people say, well, they're my family. It's not like I can end the relationship. Limit the time that you spend with people who drain your energy. All right. So I hope that I have said something tonight that was helpful for you. I am going to uh, close. I want to thank uh, my Periscope peoples for hanging in with me. And um, I will see my Periscope viewers tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care, you all, and God bless.